more for Jesus. If you hear your name, please rush and testify to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Godia Patrick, Deep Akach, Felix Diritu. Clap more for them as they come. Are you tired of clapping for them? <laughs> Hallelujah. You have one minute to testify. Yeah. Praise God. My name is Felix Ndiritu. Uh, in the last, uh, before, before the last feet washing, I, 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 was, I was disturbed by many sicknesses, headache, Problems, many problems, and the uh, servant of the Lord said that you write uh, something on a paper and then you put on your wet feet. And I did that. I told God that I don't want to attend the hospital because of any, any kind of a sickness. And God has been good to me in the last two months that I have never attended the hospital because of a sickness. To him alone be all the glory. Praise God. My name is Sister Deep, and I'm here to give God glory because God gave me a miracle job. I lost my job in the year 2012, and I started looking for a job thereafter, but I was not getting a job, so I decided to go back to school. And for two years and a half, I've been at the university. So in May this year, I decided to approach my former employers, and I asked them to give me internship without pay. I thank God because they offered me internship, and in addition, they decided to give me an allowance. And when my internship was coming to an end, they asked me whether I could relieve a lady who had gone on maternity leave, and I said yes. Meanwhile, there's a sister whom I had talked to. I asked her that if she hears any place where they need somebody because she knew what I'd studied, she should tell me. And two weeks ago, I saw an email, and it was just one line email. Dear Gladys, as discussed, please find the CV of my friend. There was no explanation. Then she sent another one line. Deep, I've sent your CV to that organization. Google and read about them, and that was all. I was very busy in the office, and I decided I'll check uh, on that, I that uh, site later. But as I was on my way to church on Wednesday, that was on. they sent my CV to that organization around 2. At around 6, because I was caught up in traffic as I was coming to church, I got a, an, a telephone call. They told me, Deep, you've received your CV. Can you come for an interview tomorrow? I went for the interview the next day. Then they told me, we are interviewing several people, so we'll get back to you in a week. But before I could reach the office where I do my internship, they called me, can you come for an interview tomorrow? I went for that interview. After the interview, the following day, which was the following week, which was on a Monday, they called me again. They asked me, can you come for the third interview? I went for the third interview. The overall boss shook my hand and he told me, I wish you well. The following day, they called me and they told me, we have given you an offer. Please come and sign your contract. To the glory of God, this is my contract. Heaven on earth. Praise the Lord, church. Hey, my name is Goodyear Patrick. And I'm here to glorify God for his doings in my life. Uh, I have, since the declaration of the Wanda Double Agenda, I took it very seriously. In the month of uh, June and July, I, I really had, had it difficult at my, my place of work, but I, I took time. And I, I explained this to my bosses that I need time to engage in this particular outreach. At the glory of God, God has visited me, and uh, this month I have seen changes in the figures of my paycheck. Uh, these figures, I was at five figures that were bringing a lot of issues, and now I have moved to six figures. My second testimony is that uh, after the Kavangware outreach, I have my brother-in-law in town. 
I have taken time. I have never visited him, but uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord led me to his house. I shared with him the word of God for some time. And uh, I discovered that for the last 10 years, he has not been going to church. So he told me that he will accompany me to church. For the last two Sundays, he has been attending church here. And I've seen him. He's in the auditorium today. I give God all the glory. <laughs> My last testimony during the 21 days of prayer and fasting, we were here for the all night, and uh, they were saying that we dance with the flags. So I took time to dance with the, I have two flags in my house. On my desk, I have two flags, the American flag and our Kenyan flag. To the glory of God, a friend of mine who is in the States sent me a text uh, last night, and he has invited me to the States, fully paid. Uh, he has asked me, to, he has processed some of the papers the other end, and he has asked me to report to the embassy for other documentation to follow. I give all the, all the glory. You shall be the next to testify in Jesus' name. In your seated position, raise up your voices and thank God for his doings. Father, we appreciate you. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for your people. We thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you and thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. If that hand is for Jesus, make it louder and louder and louder. Amen. I say amen. amen. That five figure that is bringing issues, <laughs> it will turn to six, seven, and eight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Via what you are going to be doing right now in this grace service of feet washing for possessing your possession, I see those digits change in the name of Jesus. It is offering time tonight. Please package your offerings and your tithes with joy. In the book of Psalm chapter 37 and verse 25 and 26, the psalmist says there, I have, been young, I have been young and now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Every begging and borrowing in your life ceases tonight after this feet washing. In the name of Jesus. And I went and I said, who is this righteous man? He said in verse 26, he said, he is merciful. He lended and his seeds are blessed. So that is the righteous man. The person who gives, who lends, who is merciful, who gives to the Lord. Via the offering you will be given tonight, not only you will be blessed, your own children also shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Rise up with me in honor of Jesus as we worship him tonight. Give him all the glory and all the praise. Begin to thank God for the testimonies you have had tonight because you are next in line for a miracle tonight. As your feet will be touching that water of miracle, Every financial stress and frustration comes to an end. Worship his majesty tonight. Are you giving God thanks? Because every stress in your life is hereby terminated. Give him glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Eternal King of glory, we thank you this night. We give you praise for what you are set to do. Just like you promised on Sunday via the mouth of your servant and in your word that you are going to deliver our inheritances into our hands. We are expectant. Our hearts are open. Our hands are lifted. Jesus, drop our financial miracles into our hands tonight. Let your name be glorified. Every hand lifted tonight. See to it that every financial difficulty ceases in their life. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Jesus mighty name. We'll be, we'll be casting our offering while we are seated and the choir will be leading us. I give you all that praise. 
change of level tonight. <laughs> and it shall make your feet like iron's feet and you shall walk upon your high places. How many people are ready for their high places tonight? <laughs> and this is only in six locations tonight. 
Seize location. Are you excited? Give Jesus a big, big hand. Are you ready for a change of level? Are you ready for a change of level? Give this microphone more volume in the name of Jesus Christ. Now he said, although the fig tree shall not blossom. Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. There may not be fruit in the vine. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. He said, the labor of the olive tree might fail. I won't be bothered by that. He said, yet, when things are not working, yet I will rejoice in my God. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Then he will make my feet like ants' feet. And I will walk upon my high places. So give it to us from 17. Let me see it from 17. Habakkuk chapter 3. Verse 17, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flocks shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no art in the store. 18, yet, in spite of all this, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Then 19, a sudden change, a shift. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hands' feet shift, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. Praise God. How many people are going to the high places? How many people are moving from four, five digits to nine digits? Your pay, your pay pack is changing tonight. Your position is appreciating tonight. So for the next three minutes, we will give God the hottest dance. I look at some people here, they are just standing as if, uh -huh, what did they say we came for? When are they going to do that thing? That thing will not work except you are joyful. Until you move your body and celebrate. Until you dance. A miracle doesn't dance to your hand until you dance. Three minutes, hot praise. Come on, choir. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And studio. Let me hear this man on talking drum. Give him more volume, more volume. Studio, please. Volume, beat it, this man. I can't hear it. More bass. Now start. You are worthy. Change your level. Worthy of Change grace. your level. You are the most high. Change your you level. Are worthy, Lord.
gift that you have seen to this time you shall see them no more in the name of Jesus after the feet washing tonight every adversary pursuing after your life shall be lost in the rest in the name of Jesus as you dip your feet into the miracle water tonight all your enemies shall be drowned in the name of Jesus your position is changing tonight standing in the apostolic and prophetic shoe of my father tonight I decree your time to take off from the floor is now your time to the topmost top is now favor will be eating you right left and center so shall it be give the lord a big big hand as you take your seat hallelujah i'm changing level if you are changing level make sure you say it i'm changing level if you are changing level, make sure you say it. I'm changing level. My position is changing. My privilege tonight expanding further on what the Holy Ghost was communicating through my lips on Sunday. And as we round up this month of August 2015 in our midweek services, our teaching series has been what is the war worth? The word of God. What is the word worth? What is the worth of the word of God? Tonight, the worth we are looking at in the war is mainly turn around the word what your turn around the word what your turn around the word of the world for tonight is total turn around tell your neighbor total turn around so if you want to tie to this message tie to it the worth of the word of god and dash to that turn around. Say, say to that turn around. To that turn around. And where we are beginning the journey from is the area of total earth. God's word is surgical. God's word has the ability to penetrate through every part of your body. So you are in this service for total turnaround, including total turnaround on your health. In Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. It said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And is able to pierce even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. So God's word has the ability to penetrate into your joint and marrow, to dissect every part of your body, your organ, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the earth. God's word is powerful to that level and is surgical. God is the great physician for all generations. I am the law. I change not. I've been the great physician before you came to this world. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Malachi 3, 6. That is why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. I am the law. I change not. I've told you if you want to tie to this message, you can give it to that turn around. Because everything is changing for you. For I am the law. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I've been the great physician of the old, and I'm still the great physician now. That's why I said in Exodus 
chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I am the law that healed thee. He didn't say, I am the law that healed thee. I am still on duty. I am the law that is consistently working on you. I am the law that is healing you. And say, if thou we diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and we do that which is right in his sight, and we give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the, these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptian. Praise the Lord. For I am the law that he led thee. I am the Lord that is working on you. I am the master surgeon. Master surgeon. Somebody was operated in a church. An unbelievable, the, un the unbelievable happened. They forgot cutting wool inside the belly. Another one, scissors. High on. And excruciating pains for years. And he came. Engaging one of those mysteries of the end time, the communion, the anointing oil. And one day, the one with cutting wool was coughing and cough out blood. After taking communion, cough out blood and the cutting wool. And the rest that she's been looking for was restored to her body. The master surgeon walked on her through the flesh and the blood of Jesus that she, she took in church. And that stranger was removed. Praise the Lord. So also the one that they left Caesar. They thought maybe the operation was not done. Or the stitches was not done properly. They had to reopen. And only to discover. There was scissors inside. And the wound was healed by the power in the blood. No matter what the enemy has left inside you. He said, when men slept, the enemy came to sow tears. Tonight, after your feet is treated, your total liberation is delivered in the name of Jesus. You remember, he operated on the first man, Adam. Genesis chapter 2. Checking it from verse 21. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. God operated... On the first Adam. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And then in verse 22. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. The master soldier removed the rib, covered the place with flesh. Whatever God has not created with you that is causing you nightmare, I decree by the finger of God tonight, it shall be removed from your body in the name of Jesus. God's word is surgical. Praise the Lord. Somebody was operated of recent during the wonder double. They discovered the iron in the hand. Pull out. In the time of prayer. And everything in the hand adjusted. Why? The master surgeon came on board. Whatever your doctor cannot repair. Tonight. The great physician Jesus. Will replace it for you in the name of Jesus. Tonight I decree the release of fresh kidneys. Tonight I decree the release of fresh livers. Every organ of your body that is not working well. From the warehouse of God, the manufacturer, receive a new one tonight. Receive a new one tonight. Receive a new one tonight. I am the law that healed thee. Total turnaround. God's word is also creative. God's word is creative. The entire world was empty. Then came the word of the law. And when the word came, the emptiness in the world was filled up by the word of God. All things in existence were created by God, including man, by his word. Even man was moved into a shape 
but there was no living thing inside. Nothing was inside the man. The man was just empty. And God grabbed man and breathed into his nursery. And the breath of God is his war. He said, the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. And he said, when the spirit of the word entered into me, Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, he set me upon my feet. John 6 is the 3. John chapter 6 verse 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and their life. So God's word represents his life. John chapter 6 verse 63, it is the spirit that quickened, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So God breathed life into man and all the organs of the body were created. Somebody is receiving a new part. For that body, that, that part of the body that has been troubling you in the name of Jesus. So God specializes in recreating anything dead or dying in your life. So get ready tonight. And how will he do that tonight? Two major weapons. His war and the mystery of feet washing. His war and the mystery of feet washing. I said on Sunday, and I like to repeat that, that the church of Jesus Christ is built upon the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. The church of Jesus Christ is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 21. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 21. The church of Jesus Christ is built upon the foundations of apostles and prophets. Therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the house of God. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together, great unto an holy temple in the law. Can I hear a louder? Amen. So you and I, we are built upon the apostles and prophets. Say I hear. Every mystery in the kingdom of God must be validated in the word of God. Anything you cannot find in the word is fake. Say I hear. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 8, nothing can be done against the truth but for the truth. And in Ephesians chapter 3, there are a lot of mysteries of the end time, mysteries of the kingdom in the word of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11. As common as the only communion is, it's a mystery. He gave them bread after his resurrection and their blindness were taken away. So that bread he gave them that he called, this is my flesh, this is my blood, had the capacity and still have the capacity to open their eyes. They were walking with him seven miles. And they didn't know that was the resurrected Christ. And when he gave them bread, he said, Ah, master! And he disappeared. Whatever represents blindness in your life, tonight it shall be washed in this mystery water in the name of Jesus. Now, Ephesians chapter 3. One of those mysteries is also the mystery of feet washing. I know you may not have had it before, but listen to me very carefully. You may be hearing it for the first time on Sunday or today. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So it is the end time church, the church, that we reveal to the world the manifold, manifold means manifold, many-sided wisdom of God. Wisdom that cannot be beaten hands down. Wisdom that you cannot predict. When you say you will block him at the right side, he takes the left side. Many-sided wisdom of God. Complicated. Satan cannot unravel it. 11, first 11. First 11. According to the eternal purpose, which he purpose in Christ Jesus our Lord. And apostles and prophets are the one that God always communicates this end time mysteries to. Here Paul speaking. I said on Sunday, who are apostles? Apostles are 
special envoy or call them special kingdom envoys or messenger special kingdom envoys or messengers or ambassadors sent on a mission delegated by a commissioning agent and that is Jesus Christ in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 Paul celebrated his apostleship Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 see Paul here somebody's position is changing I said somebody's position is changing if you are the one let your amen be the loudest Your change of level is tonight in the name of Jesus. I say your change of level is tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's see Paul speaking here. You like his word. Paul was too sure of what God poured upon his life. And he never allowed anyone to tamper with the grace of God upon his life. Let me find that scripture for you very quickly. Paul speaking. Either Ephesians or Philippians. I'll get it for you very shortly now. Just give me a moment. I am changing level. Say that for yourself if you are changing level. Galatians chapter 2 verse 8. Galatians chapter 2 verse number 8. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. The same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. So Peter was an apostle sent to the circumcised. Paul was an apostle sent to the uncircumcised, the Gentiles. And he stood in that office. And no devil could withstand them. So apostles and prophets as Agents of God sent on the earth to unveil to us the mysteries of the end time. And you understand that from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 2. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are ye in the law. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 2 and now Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. Apostles are people who are carrier of signs and wonder. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Say a louder amen. So tonight, by this apostolic ministry, Winners Chapel International, expect a change of level in the name of Jesus. Expect signs and wonder in the name of Jesus. Now in Galatians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle, explain how did he get at this ministry. Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. But I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. No man taught me. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. So the commissioning agent, Jesus Christ, revealed secret to apostles and prophets. Who are prophets? I told you, they are God's mouthpiece. And if you need detail on this, you get the message of Sunday to tie it to today. Now, the end time church is a church that God has decorated with many colors. You remember Joseph, his father bought him a cloth of many colors. So the end time church, you and myself, by the foundations of apostles and prophets, we are to wear dress of many colors. When Satan thought he will kill you on the way to Kisumu, you have escaped. You are unpredictable. That's what the many color means. You have many weapons in your hand. Weapons of the anointing oil. 
weapons of the Holy Communion, weapons of mantle, and now weapons of the feet washing. So when the devil thought you will drink communion, you have gone to wash your feet. He cannot predict you. Therefore, you will not die like them. I say you will not die like them. From tonight, every siege of untimely death in your family is caused in the name of Jesus. Is caused in the name of Jesus. So Jesus brought into light the mystery of feet washing in John chapter 13. We read that on Sunday. But for emphasis and for better understanding, let's look at it again. John 13. Jesus, an apostle of his own time, a prophet and the savior of the whole world. See what he said. John chapter 13, verse 3 beginning. Beginning from verse 3. Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands. And that he was come from God and went to God. He was going back to God. So he thought in his heart, what do I do? He rises up from supper. After he has taken supper with them, that represents communion. And lay aside his garment. And took a towel and guarded himself. Verse 5. And after that, he poured water by himself into a basin. And began to wash the disciples' feet. And to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was guarded. And six, then cometh he to Simon Peter, the man who talked so much. And that was the man who helped us to understand. And Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Verse seven, Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know later. That is hereafter. And verse eight, Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet because you are our master. You can't be bending down to be washing feet for me. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So what have we come for tonight? Our part in Christ. Our part of dominion in Christ. Our part of favor in Christ. I can't hear you louder, amen. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty Jesus, he the leper. When the cripples saw him, they start rejoicing. Even today, my God is doing good. Everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. Why? He carried goodness on his inside. From tonight, you will partake of his goodness. Fortune. I read to you on Sunday, Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verses 24 and 25. Let's quickly look at it. Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verses 24 and 25. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed. Say, amen. amen. Be blessed with children. That is fruitfulness. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. That is favor. Everywhere you get to. Fruitfulness, favor. And let him dip his foot. Where? In oil, that's fortune, fortune. And he said, thy shoe shall be iron and brass. He will not be trekking on the street of Likoni or Mombasa Road. His shoe, can you imagine a man wearing iron and brass? That is, he will be flying to nations of the earth. The way some of our pastors are flying here, some of them. You will soon join them. He will be going from one nation to another. That is fame. Everywhere they will know your business. Everywhere they will know your career. Everywhere they will know your ministry. I have traveled to close to 21 nations of the earth preaching the gospel. Say close to 21. He says his shoe shall be iron. It's not my fault. That's how you'll be traveling around very shortly. They will need you in Canada. They will need you in New York. They will need you in Italy. They will need you in France. I said they will need you all around the world. Yeah. Somebody is getting an international job by this feet washing. Yeah. Somebody is getting an international job by this feet washing. Yeah. Somebody is getting an international job by this feet washing. Yeah. The promotion that is coming out of this feet washing. This year we take somebody here to over 10 nations of the earth. 
If you are the one, shout a louder, amen. There are 10 students in this service tonight who will go and school abroad this year. Can I hear a louder, amen? Apostles and prophets are the foundations for the end time church. And we are so blessed. We have an apostle and prophet in the house. Our spiritual father. The president of our mission. Bishop David Olani Yoyedepo. And he said, 1990, he sat down in his office. And the word came to him. If I watch thee not, you have no part in me. If I watch thee not, you have no part in me. And the Holy Ghost communicated. Begin feet washing service. It is a mystery that the body of Christ has. They have not discovered it. You are changing level. And I think two years later, 1992 to be precise, after he had digested and meditated on that mystery, this ministry carried out the fourth, first feet washing service. And you check what happened. Everybody on the floor took off. Everybody on ground took off. From tonight, your feet is receiving wings. I see you flying around in the wings of aircrafts. That's where you are going tonight. No devil can withstand you. So what is in feet washing? Everything has been given to you on Sunday. But as a way of reminder, dominion. That is force. Say dominion. Force. There is force in feet washing. That is dominion. What again is in feet washing? There is high places. That is freedom. You are no longer stagnated. You are no longer on ground. High places. Promotion. Lifting. A shift. A change of level. What is in feet washing? Fruitfulness. Number three is fruitfulness. I've enumerated all of those things on Sunday. Four. Favor. Five. Fortune. I told you the territory of Asher is blessed. It's like the sole of a foot. The map of Asher tribe is like the sole of a foot. And when the great international petroleum enterprise marked a particular area in 1935, on that territory, they discover oil. And millions of gallons of oil is still pouring to date. Number six, fame. There is fame. Seven, there is fitness. And that fitness covers vitality and longevity. That is divine health and you live long. Say, I hear. How do I know after feet washing you will live long? Exodus 30. Exodus chapter 30, verses 17 to 21. I know after tonight feet washing. Every siege of untimely death in your family is over. They will no longer die at the age of 40. As your own feet is treated, you begin to pray for others. For long life. They will no longer die at the age of 50. He said a child shall die at what? 100. Exodus 30, verse 17. Look at it here. This thing has been from the Old Testament. And for you to understand, maybe I take you to Genesis. Keep Exodus for now. Genesis chapter 18, verse 4. Feet washing has been there. And I told you, it's a sign of receiving a guest into the family blessing. When you give a guest water to wash their feet, in those days in the Old Testament, it means welcome. Take anything in this house. Eh? Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet. And rest yourself under the tree. That is, you are welcome here. Chapter 19, verse 2. Chapter 19, verse 2. Chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19, verse 2. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn it and pray, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash, what? Your feet, and ye shall rise up early. That is, you are welcome here. Take anything you want in this family. And that's why I told you on Sunday, most of these mysteries we are looking at, 
I said, they are shifts. They have been there in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, they didn't know the what it carried. They didn't know the fullness of what it carried. I just enumerated to you seven now. But the only thing they saw was, you are welcome to the family blessings. But a number of blessings are loaded in it. And that's why when Jesus came, he said, look at it. Paul made us to understand the worth of anything that come in contact with an apostle or a prophet. So handkerchiefs and apron, when it was taken from the body of Paul, when they laid them on the sick, they were made oh. But right from Exodus chapter 40, there about, the garment of priests was being celebrated. So this thing has been in the Old Testament. I told you, the communion was being referred to as Passover in those days. But now Jesus came and said, this Passover you have been taking, and you don't know the meaning. It is my flesh and my blood. Then it became Holy Communion. Hello? Now, the anointing oil was instituted in Exodus chapter 30. Exodus 30. Let's go to Exodus chapter 30. The anointing oil was instituted in Exodus chapter 30. Maybe when you get home, you read. So the anointing oil has been there. And the composition of the olive oil was declared in Exodus chapter 30. But when Jesus came, he said, this thing is not just to consecrate people. It can cast out devils. So he sent the twelve and put oil in their hand. Because he didn't give them any money. Mark chapter 6. No money in their hand. And the Bible said, they prayed for the sick. They anointed them with oil. And they were here. Where did they get the oil? They wouldn't borrow. And they had no money in their pocket. He must have given them a bottle of oil each. A bottle of oil each. And come to the feet washing. The same thing in next, the same chapter where the anointing oil was inaugurated, was where feet washing was inaugurated. Exodus chapter 30. Look at it. Verses 17 to 21. Exodus 30, 17 to 21. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, look at it on the screen here. Exodus chapter 30, from verse 17 to 21. God spoke to Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a lava of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash with her. Eh? He said to wash. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. Hello? 19. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands, and what? And their feet thereat. For what purpose? When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, like you have come today, they shall wash their hands and water. With, I mean, their hands and feet with water. That they die not. That they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord, they will wash their feet that they die not. Hello? So that they won't die early. That they die not. So there is fitness. And that fitness includes vitality and longevity. That they die not. So when I say I cannot die any, I say, who does this man think he is? You check. That's where I'm coming from. That they die not. Every death pursuing anyone in your family or pursuing you, I decree that death is destroyed. Tonight! That arrow of death, go back to the sender. That arrow of death, go back to the sender. You are free tonight. Actually, what we came for is just to wash. But they told us to still expand the word to you. You have had so much on Sunday. I was entering this service. I said, to my wife, I said, any mystery you understand and you are able to communicate, it is impossible for people not to rush at it. It is it, it, The issue is that, does the pastor himself understand it? If he does not, he cannot communicate it. Have you ever in your life seen this kind of I mean, midweek service? And it's holding in six locations. And everywhere here is filled up. One of the locations. Adam, there will be overflow. Uh, they have not talked to me, but you call them. They will tell you there is overflow. So when the understanding is communicated, you speak like the Topia Enoch. Here is water. What stopped me from being washed? From tonight, your inheritance of a colorful promotion.
colorful office, colorful house, colorful miracle cars, you are taking it tonight. There are three people here that doctors have given their day of death. They told you that sickness will kill you. I'm glad to announce to you, you die no more. You are dying no more. He said, let them dip their feet in water that they die not. That arrow of death go back to the devil and his agents. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? That Mrs. Oladile washed the feet of the two kids remaining. Two of them, he, he, she had lost them to SS before she became a believer. And when she joined our church in 2002, the children started disturbing her. Let us go for this feet washing service in winter. They just joined the church. So they went. After they joined, after they have washed, they told the mother, let us go and test. We can no longer be SS. I shared that on Sunday. The mother said, this disturbance is too much. We will go later. I said, now. After disturbing their mother for about two, three weeks, the mother said, okay, let's go. The, the, the mother nearly fainted. She got a shock. Two of them tested AA. Because the reproach was washed into the water. Some people have preached John chapter 13 to you. Some pastors. That is a way of Jesus demonstrating meekness. Now for Jesus to demonstrate meekness. As the master. He will just take the feet of the least person. Not Peter. He won't pick the oldest. He will pick a small boy. Or the one that is not as old as Peter. And say, see the way I'm watching the feet of this young man. It means I'm demonstrating meekness. But it was detailed, sir. He said, look, if I don't wash you, you don't have a part in me. So let's not explain it away. Your part is, and there is no extraordinary water. The same tap water. They just fetch it and put it at the back there. What makes the difference is the proclamations into the water. As I ask you to stand up and I begin to prophesy on those water, they become miracle water. And I told you on Sunday, you should know there's nothing in water except the water of the world. The word of God makes the difference. There is nothing in water. It was the same water where Peter was fishing and he didn't get anything that the master now said, go back there. Something is there now. By the prophetic work of the master, there a rush of fishes. A rush. The same water. That blind man in John chapter 9, verses 1 to 9, when you get to him, you read. He was born blind and they were asking Jesus, is this man a sinner who sin himself or his parent? Jesus said, no, this sickness is for the name of the Lord to be glorified. And when Jesus met him, he spat on the ground. What a dirty thing. <laughs> that is like, put saliva in the soil and carry the clay on the man's eyes so that if the eyes is not blinded properly you use the clay to blind him. <laughs> and after that Jesus said now go to Siloam and wash that, that river has been there for a year but the word of Jesus turns Siloam to a miracle river those miracle bowl of water at the back tonight as I decree over them in the apostolic shoe of my father your miracle, your inheritances, and your blessing shall be downloaded from them in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Naaman, the captain of the Syria, he had everything, but he was a leper. Then one little girl, he made in the house, say, if only you can get to the prophet who is in Israel, you shall be made old. There's a prophet in Israel called Elijah. And you know what happened? When Naaman came to Israel, he went to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel rented his cloth. That, who is this man that is coming to me to heal him? How can I heal? And Elisha had it. He said, tell that guy to come here. I'm the prophet in the land. He said, tell that guy to come here. And when he came, the prophet didn't appear to him. So God doesn't think the way we think. The prophet sent a message to him. Tell him to go and wash in Jordan. Then Naaman got angry. Ah! I came all the way from Syria to here. <laughs> so the man will not come out to lay hand on me. He said, I thought the man would come out, just lay hand on me. So there are times you think this is how it will go, and it will go the other way. 
That's why tonight, don't commonize any water. Don't say, if only Bishop Oyedepo or this Pastor Victor can wash my leg. Every bowl of water is a miracle bowl. God doesn't think the way we think. I thought they would pray for me 21 days and I'll be made old. Tonight, your deliverance is here. I said, tonight your deliverance is here. What do I need to do? And I conclude on that part. What do I need to do to partake of the blessing available? How to take the delivery of your inheritance? How to take the delivery of your inheritance? John chapter 3 verse 8. As I conclude, John chapter 3, verse 8. John chapter number 3, verse 8. The wind blew it where it listed. You can't tell where it's coming from and where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So when you are born of the Spirit, properly born again, you are unpredictable. Number one, be born again. Be born again. The miracle water can't perform any miracle in your life except you are a child of God. Be born again. Give your life to Christ. Forsake your whole way. Forsake your sinful nature. Repent from your sin. And accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. He's not going to condemn you. So if you are here tonight and you have realized that the only thing missing in your life is salvation. When I make altar call, don't mind whosoever is around you. Just walk tall. I found a new way of living. I found a new life in Christ. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in that. You walk out. Yesterday, make it 21 years. 21 few years that I gave my life to Christ. August 25th, 1994. I've never had a better yesterday. Every day has been an improvement upon the previous. It's not so many years. few years, 21 years ago. You have no regret submitting your life and destiny to Christ. Be born again. Be born again. And it's not how many years you have been born again that matter. It's are you still in the law? So if you are here, you have given your life to Christ before, but you discover something happened along the line, and you went back, you basically there. It's never late. Neither do I condemn you. The master is asking you, you can come back. You can return. You can rededicate your life to me. And so, as I make the altar call tonight, and you want to rededicate your life, don't mind who is around you, so that you don't miss your high places. Just walk out. Jesus, I surrender all to you. Number two, believe in the finished work of Christ. Believe in the finished work of Christ. John 19 verse 30. He finished the job on the cross. And he said, it is finished. John 19 verse 30. Jesus said, it is finished. So you have to believe in that finished work of Christ. He has finished your healing. He has finished your long life. So no devil can cut short your life. Number three. Believe in the mystery of feet washing. Believe in the mystery of feet washing. That we are engaging tonight. I gave you a definition on Sunday. I said, feet washing is a scriptural mystery with which we gain mastery over our adversary. Feet washing is a scriptural mystery with which we gain mastery over our adversary. So believe in that mystery of feet washing. Don't call it uh, winner's church doctrine. No! scriptural basic doctrine it is as important as water baptism only that many ministries have not discovered it tonight don't be surprised i don't have to make call for it there are ministers of the gospel here tonight i've never administered feet washing anywhere and pastors of various churches will not gather they are here tonight they are buying into this end time mystery. And with it, you gain a flight. In your ministry, you gain flight. In your business, you gain flight. And in your career. Sir, I'm not lucky. 
I'm only lighted. Sir, I'm not lucky. I'm only lighted. This is what I've been working in, and I keep flying. I keep changing level. I have never seen a better yesterday in my life. God has never worked with me based on any name I'm called, but based on my relationship with him. I have never seen demotion in my life. Ask Satan. He will tell you, yeah, 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 yeah. I said something in Adam. I said, as many of you who were part of Wonder Double, if your level does not change this year, then God is not on the throne. From the pastorate. Where are you going to be from now? Say, I places. Say, I places. God does not take people backward. He takes people forward. I see you going forward. I see you going forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. So believe in the mystery of feet washing. Believe in the mystery of feet washing. Four or five. Number four. Believe God to confirm his word. Every word being declared tonight, believe God to confirm it. Number four, believe God to confirm his word. Mark 16, 20. They went for preaching everywhere. God was working with them. Confirming the word with signs following. Number five. Believe also in the prophetic proclamations that I'm declaring and that I will be declaring over the water. Believe in those prophetic proclamations. Believe in those prophetic proclamations. He said in Matthew 10, 41, Whoso receive a prophet in the name of a prophet shall have the prophet's reward. Look up everybody. Whoso receive a prophet in the name of a prophet shall have a prophet's reward. Don't look at who is this lamp or this young man talking. How old is he? It was Miriam that carried Moses in his hand like this. An auntie of Moses. Small boy, small boy. But one day he took, he used his tongue against Moses. After Moses entered into the prophet, into the prophetic, and God got angry. Then Moses had to kneel down. Please, God, he said, no. When a man spit on his father's face, he must be punished. Suddenly, Moses became a prophet to his auntie. There are pastors of a ministry. There are sons of the prophet over that ministry. I'm glad to let you know I'm one of the accredited sons of Bishop David Oedipo. And whatever works in his hand must work in my hand because he released his blessing over me. Tonight, every word I declare over you shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Elisha was a son under Elijah. Whoso received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall have the promise of the world. But if you commonize the word being preached or commonize the minister, commonize the water. Sorry, you can't be helped. Lastly tonight, see the feet washing mystery as your shift. Your change of level. Your shift. See the feet washing mystery as your shift. That is your change of level. This is a special service. So it's not a service of 7.30. It's a service of 2 hours. Say I hear. Good. See it as a shift. 1962 I told you. Dr. Thomas Cohn wrote a book and he titled it The Structure of Scientific Revolution. And Dr. Kuhn introduced an ideology of a paradigm shift, the word paradigm shift. And it divine paradigm shift as changes in science from one season to another. And that gave back to most of the things we are used to 
in the medical science today, talking about DNA, deosribonucleic acid, that helps you to check what is the identity of the operator on this ground. That helps you to know the true father of a son. That wasn't there before. That help in criminal justice. That help in kidney transplant. There was a shift 1962 in medical science. And the man described it as a paradigm shift. And I told you, we don't only have a shift in the scientific world, we have it in the business world. From 1990s, we took on online. And you can do business online from your room. Sell any product you want to sell. So postal service became outdated. Emails came in, websites. And you can hold on a flash everything that is details of whatever you are doing as a businessman. And I also told you of the kingdom paradigm shift in the time of um, Fifteenth century, from Romans chapter one verse seventeen, how the understanding of Romans chapter one verse seventeen was given to that man, Martin Luther Jr. or Martin Luther, and I told you of the Passover paradigm shift tonight. Let me give to you a bit of what feet washing paradigm shift is all about. It will help your understanding. And it will help you to start basking in the glory of God. Hear this. A paradigm shift is a fundamental change in an individual or society's view on how things work in the world. And you can also think of a paradigm shift as a change from one way of thinking to another. Like I said, feet washing had a perspective in the Old Testament, but Jesus came to change the perspective. You can also look at a paradigm shift as a time when the usual and accepted way of doing Something or thinking about something changes completely. So Jesus came in John chapter 13 to change our perspective totally about feet washing. By the time he began to enumerate the blessings it carried. And when our apostle discovered it, we took on on a flight. And remember, there was one man who partook of it in the day of Jesus. His name was Peter. Peter. And that was the man who able to understand what feet washing was all about. And it was the same Peter that saw Jesus walking on water. And the entire disciple thought, hey, this is a spirit. Matthew chapter 14 verse 28. And they began to argue. He said, this is the master. And Peter said, master, if you are the one, bid me to come. And the master said, come. And we saw Peter walking on top of water. In this shift tonight, whatever flood of life is meant to drown you, you will survive it in the name of Jesus. I say you will survive it in the name of Jesus. See it that no bullet can kill you. Say I hear. No poison can kill you. After this feet washing, no arrow of the enemy can handle you anymore. Can I hear a louder amen? I wish every disciple is like Peter. Just give me five minutes more and we stand up to pray. It was only Peter that stepped out of the boat. He stepped out of the small, familiar, safe arena and walked to the unsafe arena. He stepped out from the confine of what is generally acceptable and he moved to a bigger ocean. Now hear me. 
If you are not a progressive Christian, you cannot partake of the blessing of faith washing. Because it is contrary to what you know before. A progressive Christian is ready to learn. A progressive Christian sees things in a different way. Maybe the Holy Ghost wants to teach me something I have never known before. But a boat Christian stay inside the confine of the small, familiar, safe boat. I don't want to come out of here. Oh. That's why some people, the church where they are born, that's where they die. And the church may not have the truth. Where they are born, that's where they die. The priest has not seen more than in the day of Abraham, in the day of Joseph. There is no new light. But Peter stepped out of the boat into a bigger ocean. So, and every bigger ocean is a bigger opportunity. Therefore, as your feet is washed tonight, I see your business and career entering into a bigger opportunity. Bigger favor. Bigger wonders. In the name of Jesus. It was only Peter that said, maybe God want to teach me something I've not known before. Maybe the Lord want to teach me something I've not known before. Theologically and spiritually, a paradigm shift is about understanding the truth you have never understood. It's all about understanding the truth that you have never understood. Something added to you that you have never known before. New truth is a pool of bigger ocean. Only Peter said, if you are calling me to a bigger opportunity to learn something new, Something fresh, why not? Then beat me to come. And Jesus said, come. So we are here tonight learning something new. Something you have never had before. You learned it on Sunday and you are learning more today. It is for your flight. I said, it is for your flight. In a paradigm shift, you cannot walk out of the old nature and still be thinking of the old place. Your perspective has to change. You must change your perception. Your future is more important than your past. I know you knew a lot of things in the Bible before. But here is a new light. And God is opening your eyes to it. May you embrace it in the name of Jesus. That's why I sang that song. I found a new way of living. It's a new way of living. It's for your flight. That is why you don't go to a progressive church like this church. And still be passive. You can't be in a progressive church and still be passive as it was in the beginning. War without end. Amen. 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 No! Jesus is constantly working on the body. And the body of Christ is improving by the day. Sweating for new light by the day. May you embrace this new light. I can hear you louder. Amen. It is not good to go to a progressive church that has strong teaching like this place if you are not willing to really learn something new. If you are not willing to learn something new, don't come. Because it will affect you, it will irritate you, it will aggravate you. If you are really a bold Christian, if you are not an ocean Christian, don't come to a progressive church. Are you hearing but if you are a progressive Christian ever going forward, then you keep moving forward all the day of your life. A bold Christian stays within the confine of what is small, what is limited, what is familiar, what is convenient, and what is generally accepted. He doesn't want to hurt his friend. Did you go to that church? In fact, they won't call it church. Did you go to that church? That winner? Hey, what did they tell you? Then you tell them the testimony erupting from here. Can I hear a louder amen? There is nothing as bad as having a boat member in an ocean church. It will be frustrated. You can't be a boat member who doesn't want to step out into a new horizon. And you are in an ocean church. You'll be frustrated. So you must be an ocean Christian ever progressive. Say I hear. Tonight. I welcome you to this ocean church. It's a church where all the waters of life is flowing. 
and I see you drinking into it in the name of Jesus. If you are an ocean Christian, a progressive Christian, you will always be ostracized, you will be mocked, you will be talked against, yet you will be moving forward. Yet your life will be appreciated. Your name will be changing. Even our father, Abraham, was Abraham before. But as an ocean believer, as an ocean believer, his name was changed to father of many nations. Sarah was Sarai. Jacob, who became Israel, used to be Jacob. Then he became Israel. God is changing your name here. So get ready to learn new truth. Get ready to move forward. They may talk against you. You may be hated. You may be mocked. You may be ostracized. But your dominion is a reality. I say your dominion is a reality. There is one man here who every ladder in your office will come to kneel down to, to beg for help. That is all of the people who look higher than you, you would be the one that will have the solution in that office. Amen. They will come to you Amen. asking you for answers. And suddenly, your pay will move from four digits to nine. Amen. Then they start calling you boss. Boss. How many boss are here tonight? Your position is changing. Amen. Your position is changing. Amen. So where you are now is a good place. There was a time I was pastor number six. I entered ministry as pastor number six. But from number six, I was shiny. Eh? Shiny. So where you are now is good. That's why I said on Sunday, it is not your title. It is the blessing you carry. Because there is no entitlement in title. There is no entitlement. They don't pay you for being doctor, professor, pope, mm -mm. chief architect. <laughs> there is no entitlement in it. Praise God. So when you learn that, you enjoy your life all the days of your life. You'll be smiling. The what you carry matters. There is no entitlement in title. Tell your neighbor, there is no entitlement in title. Tell three people, there is no entitlement in title. Tell three people. What is title? I define it on Sunday. Adjective of convenience. When you just want to feel good, you say, I'm now chief engineer and a lawyer and a reverend. Don't forget, professor. You just want to feel convenience. Or a mere cover-up for loss of value. So when you have lost value, you look for something to cover it. But from today, the value that you are going to carry will be like that of Jesus Christ. I was speaking to a unit on Sunday and I said, you better find a way to serve God. Choir to be precise. Serve God. Forget about the portfolio. Serve God. Serve God. The more they tie to, the more you are tied down. Serve God. As a brother, serve God. Tied to has confused Africa that they are looking for more. Chief architect, reverend, pope, professor, MNI, OMM, ITT. They won't remember when they will say HIV. <laughs> Praise God. As you dip your feet in the water, I see you galloping to your high places. I say you are galloping to your high places. Stand to your feet tonight and say, Lord, I'm ready for a change of level. I'm ready for a shift. I'm ready for a shift tonight. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I'm ready for a change of level tonight. I'm ready for a change of level tonight. Change my experience tonight, Jesus. Change my experience tonight. Let my position change. Let my position change. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Every movement stop right now. All eyes closed and all air bow. How can you come this far 
and you don't tap into the blessing. Don't let Satan cheat you. All eyes close and all heads bow. And the only way to tap into the blessing is by acting to the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are every lady. He said, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Come unto me. Come unto me. So if you are here tonight, you are not born again. Your opportunity is here. To receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I know you have been coming to church. But maybe you have not had the opportunity of giving your life to Christ. Why not coming tonight? He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to change your level. This is your night. Your night of change is here. And for you to really understand what I'm saying, they will interpret it to you now in Kiswahili. You have heard the war. Neno. And you like the high places. Na you like the kwa blessings. Ugepen, you ba. like all the inheritances. Na kila and you are kila here kila tonight. Uko hapa. You are saying, how do I partake? You can only partake by giving your life to Christ. Kwa kumpa yesu yako. So you are here tonight. Uko hapa you leo. want to give your life to Christ so that you kuko. can be part of the full blessings tonight in the, the feet washing. Kupitia Wherever kusha you kusha are, kusha just kusha put your right hand on your chest and I'll pray with you right now. Kwa Some kwa people kwa are even already kwa coming kwa out, but put your right hand on your chest and I'll pray with you right now. Kwa kwa or maybe you are giving your life to Christ before, but you went back. And Jesus is calling for you tonight. That come back home. The prodigal son return. So you, you can return tonight. So you are here. You want to dedicate your life to Christ. Just put your right hand on your chest. Wherever you are seated at the back, at the front. Put your right hand on your chest. I pray this prayer after me. Say Lord Jesus. I confess you today. As my Lord. And personal savior. Forgive me. And write my name in the book of life. I know you died for me. And on the third day. You rose again. Right now. I believe. I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I'm now a child of God. Thank you Lord Jesus. In Jesus mighty name. If you pray that prayer with me. Quickly rush to the altar here. I want to bless you. If you pray that prayer with me. Come, come to the front here. The blessings are here. You want to give your life to Christ. You are the Dedicating your life to Christ. You are tired of struggle. You are tired of disappointment. Come from the back. Everywhere. This is your night of change. Don't miss this night. Come, come from everywhere. Jesus is waiting for you. Your change of level is here tonight. Your change of level is here tonight. Now on it, everyone bow down your head. Everyone bow down your head. And all eyes close. Now if you pray that prayer with me Come on, and you are giving your life to Christ now, now I'm waiting to receive you at the front here. If you clap better they will walk faster. They are coming from everywhere. You can see join them. It's never late. They are coming. They are coming. You can see, join them from the back. My brother, come, come, come. You are the only one we are waiting for. This is your day. Come from everywhere. They are still coming. They are still coming. This is your night. Don't miss this opportunity tonight. Come from the back there so that you can be a part of the blessing. They are coming from everywhere. You, are, you can see, join them. It's never late. It's never late. Now, audit. There are about 15 of you seated there. And I want to give you opportunity, 14 more, before I close tonight. Don't let this blessing pass you by. You need Jesus in your life. Quickly come so that you can be part of this blessing. So that the blessing that's been distributed tonight, you will not miss your portion. Quickly come. This is your opportunity. In your own case, you have given your life to Christ. But you went back. And Jesus is saying you can come back. It's no. never late. Yes, so there are 12 of you remaining tonight. Come Quickly come. Back. It's never late. Ten more. Ten come more. Ten come more. Come come more. This is your night. In come from your everywhere. Home. Choir sing as they are coming. Choir sing as they are coming. Ten more people. Ten more people. Don't miss your opportunity tonight. Ten more people. Don't miss your opportunity tonight. Nine more. Nine more. Nine more. Nine more. Nine more. This is your night. Don't miss your opportunity tonight. This is your opportunity of a change of level. This is your opportunity of a change of level. This is your opportunity of a change of level. Hold it quiet.
Eight more, eight more. Eight more. Eight more. Eight more. Eight more. Before the count of ten. After ten, you can join them again. The eight, you can join them again. After ten, count, you can join them again. One, one person is already coming. Seven more. One, two. This is your opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. One more person is coming. Six more. Six more. One more person is coming. Five more. Five more. Five more. Five more. Five more. Oh, four more. Four more. Four more. They are there. Jesus know you. They are there. Four more people. Four more people. Four more people. Three more. Three more. You are there. This is your night. Oh. One more. Okay, complete. You can see come, it's never late. You can see come, it's never late. You can see come, it's never late. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Asante. Now lift up your right hand above your head. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I know I've been a sinner. Say that after me. I know I've been a sinner. They are still coming. You can still come. It's never late. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again. Right now, I believe. I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I'm not a child of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, your grace has brought these precious people. Let the same grace preserve them in the name of Jesus. I decree right now the power of sin is broken in your life. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. You are free forever. In Jesus mighty name. Church, shout a louder amen. Friends, welcome to the kingdom of light. Where no darkness prevail. Your kingdom friends are here. And they will lead you to the back. They are where you'll be attended to in a few minutes. Then you join us in the feet washing ministry. You are welcome to the kingdom of of God. Hallelujah. Take this direction. This direction. God bless you, my brother. Choir sing as they are moving. They are moving. Choir sing. God bless you. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Hallelujah. Still once, let's move the water boat to the various junctions and still once position yourself right now. At the front here, there are two points. Two points at the front here and the rest at the back. Now lift up your two hands, everyone. Lift up your two hands. You are here tonight to partake of this miracle feet washing. I decree all of the part that is yours in Christ is delivered fire this feet washing ministry in the name of Jesus. I decree your high places established in the name of Jesus. I decree your healing and total end established in the name of Jesus. As you partake of this feet washing ministry tonight, that miracle job is released in the name of Jesus. Grace to complete that miracle house. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I release favor, fortune, dominion, fruitfulness, fame, fire defeat washing tonight in the name of Jesus. You came here with any sickness. As you dip your feet in that water, that sickness will not follow you back in the name of Jesus. HIV die in that water. Liver problem, kidney failure is over in the water. Every terminal sickness and disease is washed away in the water. Every reproach, barrenness, and enigma in your life is washed out in the water. Everyone who desires a change of level, promotion, open door, business breakthrough, career breakthrough, receive it in the name of Jesus. Your career breakthrough, your business breakthrough, your ministry breakthrough is established in the name of Jesus. After this feet washing, a new chapter is open in your life. A new chapter is open in your life. And in your family life, a new chapter is open. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. 
locate any point close to you we have numerous point at the back ushers please position the people why the choir will be giving us high high praise as we are celebrating high high praise Hallelujah. i am going higher yes i am going higher for the lord is on the throne Jesus, I am every day. I am, 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 I am,
Solutions of organization, solving the problems of organization, solving the problem of nations, solving the problem of continent. 
in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been paying local currency. Enough. From tonight, you earn your pay in ad currency. You earn your pay in foreign currencies. You'll be paid in dollars, pounds, and euro in the name of Jesus. Get ready for your high places. No devil can stop you. Congratulations. If you know that you know. Eh? Get ready, get ready. Studio, studio. Let me see the jumping. If you know that you know that you know. That your position is changing. Get ready. Jump your highest. Jump your highest. Jump your highest. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. On Sunday, we are here for special Passover service. And your level is changing. Tomorrow morning, covenant hour continue. In Jesus' mighty name. Shall we share the goodness in fellowship? At least when you are coming on Sunday, if I two, three people who have never been here before, congratulate three, four, five people before you go. Congratulations, congratulations.